sorry. Can't quite buckle my helmet up. There we go. Sorry, I kind of made a lot. I spoke loudly when I first came down. I know that kind of blasts through the microphone. Good morning. Welcome to Freeway Bible Study. I'm Kurt. I'm your host. You're, you're. Uh, uh, I'm not a reader or a translator. I'm just a uh, uh, commentator. Yeah. And we're off. And today I'm going to talk. I'm going to comment on Exodus 7 of the Bible and continuing the saga of Moses and Aaron attempting to lead the people of Israel, the Israelites, out of Egypt, out of their bondage. So now, um, oh, and I'm a non-believer, but I like reading the Bible <laughs> and other holy scripts. So uh, at this point, um, Moses and Aaron have not had good luck with Pharaoh. They were rebuked by Pharaoh after their first, you know, request to leave to take the people out of E. Uh, is this going to turn green? Can I go? It's going to turn green? Yeah, green. Off we go. I know that was a right turn arrow, but that's okay. I always have to violate the law a little bit at that intersection because the sensor won't pick up my bike. And either I have to go straight on the right turn or I have to uh, swing around after I do that and make a U-turn on the next street. It's, it's a tricky one. Back to it. So, um, this is going to be their, uh, and, and Moses and Aaron, Moses in particular is very faint of heart. He's not really sure about any of this. Uh, so Moses keeps on having to, I mean, God keeps on having to you know, bolster Moses' courage to continue on, you know, reminding him, I'm the God of, I'm the God of your, your ancestors, Abraham <coughs> and the like. And, you know, and furthermore, I mean, if you still won't believe me, I'll tell you my real name, which is, which is Yahweh, you know, which I didn't tell anybody else. I mean, just believe me, Moses, get out there and do it. I mean, it's a, it's a family trait for, to doubt and question, even though they're talking to God directly. So, anyways, the next one is that, you know, we'll start with a little pep talk in Exodus 7. God does just, doesn't just, you know, try to encourage Moses, but he goes so far as to, to tell Moses that, you know, you, I have made you like a god, you know, unto Aaron, and Aaron will be thy prophet. I mean, explicitly what he says. I mean, of course, he's not making him a god. Of course, it's, I mean, I imagine it's figure, it's all figurative. Come on in. I'll back up a little bit there. You can get in. But nevertheless, uh, I mean, he's, this Moses guy is really doubting things. So God tries to, he gives a little pep talk, says that um, I will, let me adopt my best, but I'm trying not, I'm not trying to be blasphemous, but it helps me get it to character. My best God voice, kind of, you know, I will, Moses, I will make you a God unto Aaron, and Aaron shall be thy prophet, and you will speak to Pharaoh, and he will release you with, with a mighty hand. He's speaking of Pharaoh's mighty hand, which, after I draw my hand across the face of Egypt with my wonders, and I think, and I think he says something about hardening the Pharaoh's heart in that process. Now, Jewish commentary, I'm, I've started um, adding, uh, uh, you know, I've been up until now, I've been reading each chapter once in the King James edition, once in the New International Edition, New, in the, in the New International Version, NIV. That, wow, don't go so fast, guy. Life's too short, you just get into the end to end quicker. So, um, once in the NIV, which kind of gives more of a, a modern English uh, read, and then I've lately just started once because of my friend uh, Colby who recommended it. He, I've started uh, reading a Jewish uh, translation with what's called Rashi commentary. Rashi is a famous medieval French Jewish rabbi who had a lot to say, a lot of interesting things to say about the uh, Torah and other um, uh, Bible texts. Uh, and so I started reading that, and it's really interesting. And um, Rashi's commentary says that even though God said he would harden Pharaoh's heart, still Pharaoh had the ability to overcome that. <clears throat> Which leads me to wonder if Pharaoh could, could do that, wouldn't that have rendered God a wrong? Because God tells us, he lays things out even before Moses goes goes to Egypt, he lays things out and he says, listen, here's the plan, guys. We're going to, 
you and Aaron and I are going to go into Egypt. We're going to we're going to try to we're going to talk to the Israelite elders and Pharaoh and convince them to let the people go so that they can go to the wilderness and worship me. Really, we're going to leave. We're not coming back. But I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. He's he's not going to let you go. So that'll give me a chance to use my wonders and magic to really show that I am the Lord. And eventually you'll be gone. You'll be able, they'll let you go. So if Pharaoh really retained the ability to reject that, then that would have rendered all that uh, God previously said incorrect. So wow. Well, of course, it's according to the story, it all works out to plan. So after this little pep talk at the start of Exodus 7, God then gives specific instructions. He says, okay guys, now you're to go back to Pharaoh again. And um, Aaron, that staff here, care oh no, Pharaoh's going to ask you, he's going to say, okay, you say you guys are representative gods, let's see some magic tricks, show me, show me some wonders that, to prove it. And Aaron, what I want you to do then is I want you to take that staff that you're holding and I want you to throw it down on the ground. So I guess Aaron's staff, not just Moses' staff, because remember, God taught that trick to Moses back on the mountain, you know, the, the staff to snake thing. But I guess Aaron can do it too. <coughs> Aaron, throw it down and it'll become a snake. And uh, that'll convince him. And if that doesn't work, uh, no, 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 he, that's all he says. So they... Yeah, that's all he says. So then they go and they see Pharaoh, and exactly, uh, and, and it turns out exactly as Pharaoh, as God said. Pharaoh questions him, and they take down the snake. And they take Aaron takes his staff and throws it down. And guess what? After it turns into a snake, <coughs> Pharaoh turns to his wizards and says, "Hey guys, show them what you got." And all of the wizards throw down their staffs, and they all turn to snakes too. Now, I did a little research, and it turns out that staff to snake or snake to staff, they can do both, apparently, is not, that's an Egyptian parlor trick. Apparently, this is something that was done on the streets, that there are, are records of Egyptian, um, you know, street, street performers that could cause a, you know, of course, they didn't really turn it into a staff, but they would cause like a snake or even an alligator, I mean, a, cro a small crocodile to turn stiff as a board, like a staff. And so it was kind of a figurative thing. So, you know, like, like almost like a rigor, motor, rigor mortis type of thing. So that was kind of a parlor trick. So I'm thinking to myself, wait, wait a minute. That's like, that's like if God said to, let, let's say he chose John Jones to, uh, to be the prophet of America. And he said, he said, I want you to go to Manhattan and you're gonna go talk to President Trump <laughs> and you're gonna tell him to let my people go, whoever the heck they are. And to sh and then, then President Trump says, "Show me some wonders." And President and and John Jones, I'm just made that name up, of course. Uh, he says, "Okay, here you go." And he gets out that you know that 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 ball and cup thing trick. Okay, okay, President Trump, a little table. He unfolds the legs down and puts the three you know half cups on the thing and one ball. And he says, "Okay, President Trump, the ball's under number two, right? The second position. Yes, yes, indeed." And now keep your eye on the ball and. He then does that hand thing, swish, 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 back and forth, and says, okay, Mr. Trump, where is the ball? And Mr. Trump says, number one, and lo and behold, it's not a number one. That's kind of, that's kind of a, a street trick, right? So, I mean, and then President Trump says, well, that's no big deal. I've got people that can do that, too. And out walks David Blaine and says, here I go, I got the same thing. You know, I mean, that wouldn't convince President Trump that you were, if you were just doing like a street magic type of a deal, right? You'd have to do something more than that. So, Pharaoh isn't convinced, and he does not let the people go. So Moses and Aaron go away, you know. I'm sure that they were pretty sad, and I'm sure the Israelites were, were, were pretty disillusioned, right? They're like, what? Is that the best you can do? So, that night, I, I think it's that night, God appears again to Moses, and I guess he appears to Aaron, too, maybe. No, 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 he just appears to Moses, because Moses will be the prophet. So then he communicates to Aaron, and he says, Moses, Moses! Okay, enough with that. I told you I wanted to show some wonders. So, it's, of course, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart so he won't believe what you're doing. And the next trick is that I want you to take that... Aaron will take that staff of his. Uh, I, it's interesting that Aaron's doing all of this. And I read something that explained why, and I can't remember. I want you to take that staff of yours, and Aaron to take that staff of his, and I want you in the morning, I want you to go down to the river where you're going to meet Pharaoh, because he's going to come out in the morning, 
and you're going to stand across the waters. I don't know if that means they're like on the other side of the Nile or if he's just going to stand across the little bay or just what. But I'm trying to picture it in my mind. Maybe it's a little cove or something, you know, with crocodiles swimming around. And I want you to stand on the other side and you're going to do some magic. Now, before we get there, I want to point out that the, the Christian Bible readings that I've done, here, I'll go ahead and move forward. I was going to let this guy in. I guess he doesn't need to come in. The Christian Bible readings I were doing, I was doing, doesn't have much to say about any of this. I mean, there is some. I'm reading some good scholarship, but it's more archaeological, anthropological, historical stuff. The Jewish stuff is really fascinating. This Rashi commentary. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Rashi, Rashi. His his actual real name is something different. Um, the commentary is really much different, and it's more opinion. Uh, that's a good description, it's more opinion. Rashi says that the reason that Moses could meet Pharaoh at dawn was because Pharaoh's got a, a, a game he's playing with the Egyptians, which is that you know he's pretending to be a deity himself. And of course, a deity doesn't need to pee or poop or anything like that, so he's been holding it in all evening and all night, kind of like oh, my little doggy does when we take him out for to relieve himself. We live in an apartment. We leave himself uh, before we go to bed, and then we take him out again in the morning. Uh, but it's worse than that, because Pharaoh probably went through the banquet and everything like that. And it, it wouldn't do for Pharaoh then to step up, you know, 10 p.m. after uh, after the main course and say, oh, I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, i got to go, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, drop the kids off at the pool, where the pool is being the Nile. It seems like people are relieving themselves in the Nile. So he's not going to do that. So he's going to hold it all night. Tough deal. So and then in the morning when everybody's asleep, he's going to get up early and sneak out to the river. And I guess he actually gets in the water or something, or, or poops and pisses by the water. I don't know. So he has got to go to the river to do this. And that's where God knows, and God knows this, and he tells Moses, be down there and you can meet him. So that's where they are. And they again entreat uh, Pharaoh to let the people go, and they, and they said, we will show you more wonders, and Aaron, and Aaron, go, and Aaron touches his staff to the Nile River, which causes the waters of the Nile, I guess all of the waters, like all the way, to turn to blood, killing all the fish, and of course killing everything else in there as well. You know, it's a, be a real disaster to the ecology of the Nile. Um, and it stinks, of course, because it begins to, to, it's not right away, I imagine, but it stinks because it's blood and it starts to rot and it's going to congeal and coagulate and it's going to be nastiness, right? And um, then most, uh, oh, and God told him they'd have to do this. And then Aaron, to tell Aaron that he'll have to walk around every pool and, and water system and bucket of water and ditch that's got water in it, everything, and touch all the water. It, one touch won't do it. You've got to touch every bit of water individually to turn it to blood. So I like here's can you just a picture Aaron running all around town to all the wells and the cisterns and everything, you know, all the canals, touching everything and turning it all to blood. It must be quite a sight. Meanwhile, Pharaoh's, you know, I wonder if he's taking his dump. I don't know. Or if he's hold, still holding it in or maybe he pooped his pants. I don't know. And he's watching all of this. But then guess what? Pharaoh tells his magicians, yeah, yeah, anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can do, I can do better than you. And he tells his magicians, and it's just a little bit at the end there of that part, and it says, and Pharaoh's magicians do the same. So again, it's not a trick that they can't do. This is the first plague, the first plague, uh, first of God's 10 plagues. And um, nothing big, uh, the, the, the Egyptians can do it too. <laughs> Pharaoh's magicians can't. So I think then, a little unsure, but I think then that it persists for seven days. So that the, and this is the end of the chapter, the uh, Egyptians have to dig in the sand and the dirt around the Nile to get it fresh water because if they can make a hole and then it seeps in from the groundwater, I guess then that water is fresh and that's how they do it. But I, I, what happens after seven days? Is it all just magically turned back to water? Got a whole wall of cars back there. Or does it then, um, does it then uh, or just like drain away to the to the Mediterranean? I don't know. Anyway, that's that's the end of it. We have our first of the ten plagues of of Egypt. And also, by the way, this is some commentary. Uh, some this is information that I received from uh, uh, Facebook friends because I comment on all this stuff on Facebook. 
reason too, I talked about the we talked about when I before I started this whole process, this whole project on Exodus, I did I spent a whole month studying the historicity of the Exodus story. And when we got to the plagues, um, someone commented that it could be that the a lot of these plagues may be explained away by the uh, an eruption of a large volcano that occurred on the Greek islands around and about the same time of the exodus in the, that would be the 15th century BCE. And that it was good timing. Maybe it was 15 or maybe it was the 13th century. I'm not sure. Anyway, because there's two main periods when exodus could have happened. I think it's the 13th and the 15th century. Maybe it's the 12th and 15th century BCE. And one of those, that's when that eruption occurred. And a lot of the plagues of Egypt could be explained away. For example, the Red uh, River could be the result of ash uh, that, that fell. It was a giant volcanic eruption, about 100, but was about 200, no, 400 miles away. I think it was 400 miles away. No, it can't be that far. Anyway, never mind. Anyway, it happened, and then, so maybe the river turning to blood was the blood was actually the accumulation of ash in the river or other effects from the volcanic eruption <coughs> oh here's one of those guys tough guys on the on the harleys <laughs> try it and true okay well, i'm gonna wave before uh, bye bye before i pass him otherwise he'll think i'm waving at him those guys don't typically like to wave so anyway, thanks for joining me, everybody. More Freeway Bible study next time with Exodus 8. Let's see what's next in store, what, what God and Moses and Aaron have next in store for the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Make it a good day. Make it a good life.